The following message has been brought to you by the Mile High Flood District. In this video, I'd like to share some things to look for in the field if you find yourself inspecting a steel sheet pile cutoff wall installation for a hydraulic feature like a drop structure. Steel sheet pile, or sheet pile for short, is a material commonly used for seepage cutoff walls. The word sheet means the steel has been pressed or molded into a flat shape that can interlock with adjacent sheets to form a wall. The word pile means the material is installed by pushing it into the ground, hence the name sheet pile. The topics we'll be covering include materials, installation, and final surface connections. This video is intended to be a brief overview of these topics, so please consult technical specifications for the project you're working on for more detailed information. There are many grades of sheet pile. The grade gets selected by the design engineer, but the most common type we see used for cutoff walls is something called PZ22. P stands for piling, Z denotes the cross-sectional shape of the pile, and 22 denotes the weight of the material in pounds per square feet. So whether it's PZ22 or some other material, it needs to be thick enough that it won't rust through, and sturdy enough to withstand the driving forces to install it without serious deformation. Sheet pile can be supplied in various lengths up to even 60 feet long, but we most commonly see either five foot or 10 foot lengths used on our projects. Enough length is necessary to provide adequate seepage cutoff and so enough skin friction develops along the driven sheet pile to keep it from settling further into the ground. Typically, a 10 foot sheet pile depth is more than enough to cut off seepage and to overcome any concerns with settling. Where shorter sections of sheet pile are used, they can have steel reinforcing attached to the top so they can be held in place by the grout when it gets poured for either a cap or drop structure. When sheet pile gets delivered to the job site, it needs to be kept free of mud, dirt, and other debris. It helps to set the sheets on wood stringers rather than on the ground. We want those sheets kept clean and free of rust to avoid introducing particles that can bind up the joints as the sheet pile gets driven. We prefer that sheet pile get lifted and used using a clamp rather than with hooks because hooks typically mean a hole has been cut in the sheet pile. These holes can later become a path for seepage that we'd like to avoid. This can be overcome if the lifting holes get grouted in when the cap or drop structure gets built, or if the holes are deeper than where we'll be grouting, a plate can be welded over the hole prior to driving the sheet pile. Sheet pile most commonly features mechanical ball and socket joints that allow each sheet to interlock with adjacent sheets to create a rigid barrier for earth and water while resisting their lateral pressures. The ball and socket joints allow for some flexibility in setting and alignment while remaining very durable under driving conditions. There are other types of sheet pile joints available, but they may not be as durable as a ball and socket joint, which is why we often don't see them on our projects. Sheet pile can be pre-cut to specific lengths prior to being brought out to the job site, or it can be cut in the field using a torch. Extreme caution should be used whenever field cutting sheet pile because it introduces fire risk to the job site. Our projects are out in nature in areas that could be dry and at risk of wildfire, so anytime sheet pile is being cut in the field, the contractor must have at least two methods to fight fire, such as fire extinguishers, piles of sand with shovels at the ready, some way to put out a fire should one accidentally spark up. Another good option is to perform any cutting in a paved or gravel parking lot, either near the job site or preferably in the contractor's yard offsite. There are several ways sheet pile can be installed. For really deep sheet pile installations of 20 feet deep or more, we may see a crane mounted pile driving hammer. This size equipment is rarely used on district projects because we don't often install sheet pile deep enough to necessitate it. We more commonly see excavator mounted equipment such as a vibratory head or a concrete breaker head. 
If site conditions allow, an excavator bucket can be strong enough to push the sheet pile into the ground. Of course, the soils make a big difference. If you're in the eastern to southeastern part of our district where there are sandy soils, an excavator bucket or a vibratory head may work just fine. In more cohesive soils, we may need to use something more robust, like a concrete breaker head or even a diesel pile driver. Partially connecting a few sheets prior to driving them to full depth helps maintain alignment, rather than driving every piece all the way in one at a time. This prevents really meandering sheet pile installations that can be difficult to connect to with either a cap or a drop structure. Each individual sheet pile needs to be driven as vertically plumb as possible to avoid putting too much stress on the joints. Soil borings are very important to explore areas where sheet pile will be driven so the engineer can determine how deep to drive the sheet pile for both seepage cutoff and long-term stability. If test holes aren't directly in the channel bottom exactly where the sheet pile will be installed, they may not be indicative of what soils are within the channel or where bedrock or other resistance may be encountered. In channels, we frequently encounter cobble and boulders, which can cause issues with pile driving. A slight realignment of the pile may be necessary to drive it to full depth, especially when we're working in an alluvial system. In some cases, it isn't possible to drive sheet pile to the full depth called for in the plans because we've hit what we call virtual refusal. Virtual refusal basically means the equipment you're using can no longer drive the pile any further into the ground. CDOT has very useful specifications related to pile driving that often get used on our projects. The exact details of virtual refusal depend on the type of equipment you're using, so please consult your project specifications. But in basic terms, we want to avoid pounding so hard on the sheet pile that it starts to either deform the sheets or damage the joints. Because we are typically using sheet pile for seepage cutoff, it's not always necessary to drive it to virtual refusal. That's because the sheet pile isn't being used as a structural foundation, it's not being used as a true retaining wall. So the two things we care about are that it's deep enough to cut off seepage and to prevent settlement. After the sheet pile has been driven, it typically gets connected to either a check structure or a drop structure at the surface. In both cases, the top of the sheet pile gets encapsulated in either grout or concrete to create a contiguous structure that will keep flow on the surface. Grout is essentially concrete without the coarse aggregate, so grout and concrete get used interchangeably at this connection. In some cases, steel reinforcing will get connected to the sheet pile prior to pouring grout. Reinforcing could be tack welded to the sheet pile or there can be holes cut in the sheet pile for the reinforcing to be looped through. If any holes are cut in the sheet pile, they need to be fully filled in by the final grout pour. We also like to see the sheet pile stick up out of the adjacent ground by at least 12 inches so the grout will fully envelop the top of the sheet pile. One of the most common failures we see is at this connection, typically because water seeps through a substandard connection. This eventually undermines the structure. Sheet pile is one of the most commonly used materials in hydraulic structures. This video was intended to introduce you to some of the intricacies of its proper installation for seepage cutoff walls. As a reminder, please consult your project design and specifications for more detailed information. Thanks for watching.